The U.S. House of Representatives has passed an unprecedented bill which could eventually outlaw the popular social media platform TikTok. The bill titled Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act, if also passed by the Senate that is, would demand that ByteDance, TikTok's parent company, divest all its U.S. assets to another U.S. company or face a total ban of operations. Now, while the bill has been forwarded to the Senate, it has reignited the so-called U.S.-China trade war in the tech industry. We talk to Anish for more. Anish, thanks so much for joining us. So maybe could you first take us through what has been happening in the U.S. House of Representatives? What are the arguments that are being right now presented? It's been a long, uh, it's been an issue that has been in the news for a very long time in the United States, especially in the Houses of Congress. Yes. So uh, when it comes to TikTok, it has always been, you know, the center of one of those companies that has been at the center of the U.S.-China trade wars, not primarily much because of its own doing, it, to be very honest, but because uh, it has been identified as one of the targets, uh, especially in the United States by, say, President Trump, former President Trump and, you know, some of his acolytes. Uh, so in many ways, uh, it uh, the, it, it's it coming back right now in the entire debate is essentially an indication that this whole uh, U.S.-China uh, dispute, trade dispute, is going to uh, em re-emerge and as a major election uh, issue uh, in the coming days. Uh, probably uh, it might because primarily because there is a there is a good chance that many people believe there's a good chance that Trump is uh, going uh, is set for presidency next uh, year. So definitely it is going to be at the center of the debates and the election uh, cycle as such. Uh, so so obviously a bill like this is going to also put uh, Democrats at a very uh, precarious state because many of them definitely uh, do not want to come across as an, uh, you know non-patriots or a-patriotic. So obviously you see the kind of bipartisan support. Definitely many of them did not support the law because obviously it has its own set of legal problems that can actually backfire for a very many companies uh, in the future. But uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, we are seeing this sort of bipartisan support. Uh, the bill as such, uh, if you look at it, uh, doesn't really uh, deal with uh, the necessity of TikTok or any kind of thing, but it pretty much just compels it will compel TikTok to essentially sell all of its shares and stakes uh, or assets in the United States to a U.S. company uh, within a span of six months or risk being banned uh, completely uh, from operating in the country. The primary reason given by the makers of the bill is essentially that uh, the new security laws in China, in mainland China, pretty much has a clause which, uh, you know, can compel uh, companies or uh, to tech companies, especially to uh, cooperate with them when it comes to intelligence gathering for certain national security cases. Uh, but the thing is, like, it is not out of the ordinary for a country to have a legislation of that sort. Whether or not we think uh, how uh, problematic it might be, it definitely is not something new. The United States itself has its own uh, set of laws that actually compel uh, tech companies, their own tech companies, to uh, you know divulge information and intelligence to the United States. And that has been a debate uh, set aside. But to use that as an excuse to essentially uh, put uh, the owners on a foreign company to uh, you know dive to pretty much divest itself from the United States, uh, not simply divest itself, but actually to give it away to a U.S. company uh, of their choosing uh, is something that is unprecedented in many ways, especially considering the fact that the U.S. has always prided itself as being this place of free trade and, uh, you know, of or competitive trade and business. So this is definitely uh, brings back to the spotlight some of the hypocrisies, but also some of the debates that we're seeing. But the move itself is quite unprecedented in many ways. And Anish, of course, like you said, uh, this <clears throat> law is not out of any concern of the kind of problems big tech has because clearly there's no action being taken against similar big tech, US big tech companies. But what does this, what do you think, what is first of all, what lies ahead for this uh, legislation? And also, how do you think this sort of affects the larger US tri China trade war, which is a term that is used as trade war? But how does it, how do you think it affects that in the coming years? Uh, the bill, uh, let's begin with that. Its uh, future is quite uncertain because the Senate is a very, you know, it can behave differently. We do not know how each of the senators stand. Uh, a large part of that depends also on how much uh, 
expect other foreign com companies actually view such a bill because obviously something of this sort can set a precedent for other companies as well. Even uh, com uh, companies that hail from, uh, you know, allied or friendly nations. So that is definitely something that is going to be a matter of concern for many foreign companies. This is not a matter that only affects TikTok and the lobbying money and how that flows through the Senate will eventually decide how the votes are going to line up to. There is obviously that. Uh, but uh, if it comes to fruition, what we're looking at is essentially a political vendetta of sorts, because uh, the person that right now is coming up with uh, uh, with a plan to buy off TikTok is essentially somebody who uh, was in the Trump campaign as well, uh, who is very close to Trump, in fact. And uh, this is this is it pretty much lines up as a very political attack on another company. Uh, but on the long term, this will be viewed as an attack in itself because China has obviously raised uh, a statement, uh, a position to such a bill saying that it is a sort, sort of banditry that uh, the U.S. is trying to impose on TikTok. And uh, this can actually escalate if something of this sort actually gets passed. And we have heard already from Biden that he will never, he will not veto it. He will, in fact, sign the legislation into law. Uh, it clearly shows that this is only going to escalate if the Senate eventually passes the bill. Uh, and that definitely will have its own set of impact uh, because we already saw what happened with Huawei, the entire extradition process, which never really came to fruition. Uh, there was the entire thing of uh, espionage, which was actually quite, uh, you know, there was no evidence that was substantiated in any court of law. So we have seen that kind of process and that can actually affect, bring back the whole entire, you know, trade wars, as quote unquote trade wars dispute that can actually create global ripples that uh, is not very good for anybody, to be very honest. And we have uh, talked about that before, but this pretty much is going back to that era of very uncertain uh, trading disputes that can actually affect global supply chains already at a time when everything is pretty much stressed. So that definitely is something that needs to be kept in mind for anybody observing this. But we are not looking at, we have to first wait and see how the Senate is going to act on the bill and how things are going to move forward from there. Right. Anish, thank you so much for that update. India recently signed a free trade agreement with a bloc of four European countries. The Trade and Economic Partnership Agreement has been signed with what is called the European Free Trade Association. Now, this comprises Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway and Switzerland. And it aims to bring in $100 billion in foreign investment to India in the next 15 years, in addition to creating 1 million jobs. However, activists have expressed concerns over some of the provisions in the deal, especially in the health sector. We go to Jyotsna for more. Joshua, thank you so much for joining us. So, <clears throat> free, trade, free trade agreements often are seen as something a bit uh, esoteric, uh, so to speak. It's a bit difficult to sort of go through the nuances. So, maybe could you first take us through what this agreement about is about in the first place before we go into some of the ma uh, matters of concern? Uh, so, uh, India has been discussing many free trade agreements with the uh, different countries uh, or trade blocks. Uh, so it, this is a particular trade block of four countries of Europe, which is Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, and Switzerland. Uh, and it is about, it's a trade agreement. So it has a gamut of things regarding agricultural products, pharmaceutical products, and certain general guidelines about trade between India and this trade block of four countries. So that had been uh, uh, in discussion for many years. And um, as happened uh, during COVID, a lot of uh, free trade agreements, their negotiations were stalled, um, and uh, but they have made a comeback again in the past couple of years, uh, and um, especially last one year. So uh, this is one of the first trade agreements, free trade agreements that India has concluded uh, with uh, a country or uh, a trade bloc, uh, and this is was signed on 10th March this month. Um, so yeah, so that is where we are. Right. So, uh, could you maybe tell us what are the reasons for concern that activists are like you pointing out? So, um, I mean, uh, uh, it is well known. Uh, firstly, the entire politics of free trade agreements is to really bypass uh, the, uh, the negotiations and the agreements that you arrive at at the World Trade Organization, because that is the body which uh, actually where all the countries came together to discuss how the international trade should be conducted. 
um, well, their provisions are really problematic. But when uh, we go for free trade agreements, then developing countries lose even further ground uh, and uh, rather than gaining any. Um, so, so it has happened again in this case. And I will speak from point of view of uh, access to medicines and the concerns that we have, because India has given in majorly uh, uh, in terms of intellectual property uh, rights. It is. It has given so much rights to, uh, uh, to to the big pharmaceutical companies. It is going to help them and actually work against the generic industry of India, which actually means that uh, the pr prices of medicines in the long run are going to increase if the provisions that are, exist in the free trade agreement start to be applied to India. So the, uh, on that front, it is a major loss uh, for India as we see it. Right. Uh, Joseph, uh, to maybe explain this a bit more, could you talk about how these intellectual property barriers, you know, as in how do they sort of work and, you know, how, in, in practice, how does it really affect, say, a customer, for instance, in India? Right. So uh, the point is uh, intellectual property, when a company claims uh, uh, intellectual property over a product, uh, the idea is that there has to be a balance between public health and innovation. So that's how it came about. But as we can understand, the big companies pushed for as much monopoly as possible over their product. And then there are certain provisions which help them. So we know very well about patents uh, uh, and uh, uh, where uh, a company has monopoly and nobody else can uh, produce that product on which the company has a patent till the patent exists only after it exists. Now there we have uh, uh, lost a lot. Uh, firstly, um, the pre-grant opposition, this is something which is very well built in Indian law where uh, anybody, uh, a common citizen of India or any other country also anywhere in the world, a common person uh, uh, or civil society or activists or generic uh, industry manufacturers, they can go to the court or to the government uh, before the grant of the patent to say that this is a bogus patent, hear us out why you should not grant it. Now, there, uh, 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 now this is how the courts function and law functions. But here, uh, what we have agreed to is that a lot of power will be given to the controller of the patents in the Indian Patent Office. Now, and on prima facie, uh, a case can be rejected. So even before hearing the people who have objections, it can be rejected, which uh, we think is going to be really problematic because there is always a tendency to grant patents rather than not grant. And um, so we are losing ground there. Um, the one good thing probably that has happened is it has been said that the uh, patents granted or opposite no, not grant uh, should be done in a time bound manner. Maybe that is good, uh, but it should again uh, lead to a proper analysis. And just because we need to maintain some time, uh, we should not be granting more patents than we should be. So, so that is uh, one major problem. The secondly, uh, working of a patent. So there is. Uh, if a company wants to claim patent and if there is an opposition filed, then the company has to prove that it is providing sufficient quantity of medicines in India and only then it can continue to hold the patent. There, uh, again, uh, and it actually depends, uh, a lot of information is derived from an annual uh, information uh, annually that the company uh, serves to the Indian government and it is available publicly. So anybody can see and you can see, okay, this company is not providing the medicines to India. So we should go to the court. It's an important medicine and uh, let's fight for it. Um, now, uh, 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 after this agreement, it is saying that you, the companies have to provide that information, if at all, once in three years. Right. Now, so for the longest of period, people will not be able to find a lot of data which helps in uh, the filing oppositions. Uh, thirdly, and there I would like to say uh, <clears throat> somewhere Indian government, maybe it is not correct to say lied, but misled uh, media and the civil society and activists majorly uh, uh, last month because uh, the, there is something called data exclusivity, which means that the data that the company provides will be saved. Now, according to Indian law, uh, there are many ways in which th that data can be accessed so that as soon as the patent expires, uh, before that research can be done and the medicines can be produced. Um, so we would, uh, we made a lot of noise about it because a leaked te a text showed that India was going to give into data exclusivity. The Indian government is on record saying 
that we are not going to give up on data exclusivity. Um, but in the agreement where we see, so right now they have not done it, but uh, if, uh, the agreement says every year, once if, once every year, it they will revisit whether data exclusivity should be included or not, which actually means extended monopoly uh, will be discussed. Uh, and this is a sword which will be hanging on India all the time now. Um, so that's, that is where we have lost majorly. Thing is, uh, it is going to impact India's laws. So also, if you agree to these terms in one uh, uh, negotiation, in one free trade agreement, right. then you have to change your laws, which actually means um, no other country has to go through uh, so much uh, negotiations with India because we will have to change our laws, which is going to be a big problem. Thank you so much, Joseph, for the update. And that's all we have in this episode of Daily Debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. Meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button.